So at some point you picked up a camera and realized that you loved taking photos. Maybe you are like me and you enjoy taking photos of people more than any other type of subject. And maybe you thought, like a lot of people do with their hobby or their craft, you thought, hey, I'd like to make money doing this. So in this video, we're going to explore how you can go about becoming a real professional photographer, maybe even one that earns some money doing what they love. And we're going to talk about both the technical and soft skills you'll need to make it in this type of career. So whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your skills, this video should provide you with some valuable tips and a plan to go from where you are now to becoming a professional portrait photographer. And so first we're going to discuss the technical aspects of portrait photography. And this is something that you can't avoid, actually, and I'd argue that you should learn to love this part. As photographers, we're always learning, and that's part of the enjoyment that we get out of what we do. So at first, you might feel overwhelmed with terms like aperture and ISO and shutter speed, but you know this whole photography thing is a journey. Uh, you learn as you go, and the learning never stops, which is part of the excitement. Okay, we're going to cover the basics, uh, the things that you need to learn, uh, like understanding your camera and composition techniques. And we're going to talk about the importance of lighting and post-processing. And by the end of this section, you're going to have a solid understanding, something to build upon in terms of knowing what you should know. One of the worst positions you can be in is not knowing what you don't know. So at least here we're going to cover going to overview these things. All right, so first up, understanding the basics. Now, you're going to come across various types of cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless, uh, even film cameras. And each type of camera and format has its pros and cons. Uh, you will probably be using the camera that you already have, uh, which if I'm guessing correctly, that's probably a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Uh, but there's uh, other types of cameras that you might want to experiment with in all different types of formats. And pretty early on, you should start getting familiar with the exposure triangle, which is a term for the relationship of the three main exposure settings and how they relate to each other. That's your aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. And these elements work together to create the exposure uh, when you click the shutter button. So learning to control these manually it will give you a lot more creative freedom than relying on your camera's automatic settings, although you will be using the automatic settings once in a while. Contrary to what some people will tell you, professional photographers do use settings like aperture priority rather than uh, just manual mode. And this, of course, depends on the situation. All right, so take the time to experiment and get comfortable with your gear. Start learning what these things do. And, you know, I'm going to link to some resources about the exposure triangle in the video description. All right, now let's talk about composition. This is another thing you've got to become acquainted with. Uh, some people kind of have a, a, an instinct for composition. They just know what looks good and they, they're able to compose pictures without act actually knowing the rules of composition or thinking about them. And other people have to start off by learning the rules and um, applying them. And eventually that pretty much becomes ingrained and you don't have to think about it so much just because at some point you know what looks right. So you've probably heard of the rule of thirds where you divide your frame into these nine equal parts and you place your subject along the lines are the intersecting areas of this grid in order to create a more balanced and visually interesting shot. All right. You also have what's called the S curve. This is often used in something a little more full length or a three quarter length. This technique is one that make, can make your images more dynamic. So like I said, mastering composition is important because it helps you go beyond just capturing, uh, you know, someone's face. It allows you to tell a story. And I want to say here again that once you learn the basics of composition, in actual practice, good composition sort of just happens naturally. You'll know what looks good. And, you know, there are a few rules of thumb, like not always centering your subject in the middle of the frame. Lots of times with good composition, you move your subject over one third away from, you know, one edge of the frame. Maybe the eyes are one third down from the top of the frame, things like that. Knowing um, not to crop at odd places, that's also part of good composition. 
Okay, lighting. Maybe this is the most important part of photography, whether you're shooting with the golden rays of the sun or the controlled environment of a studio. You know, understanding lighting is really non-negotiable with photography. You should understand that flash photography offers creative advantages that natural light just can't provide, like, you know, freezing motion or adding drama. It's not just about illuminating your subject when it comes to lighting. It's about setting the mood and creating an atmosphere and bringing your vision to life. Light helps you tell a story, you know, and how you use your light. It, it's not just about how you light your subject. It's also about how you light the environment in the background. Natural light, of course, it can be really beautiful. I love shooting with natural light, but it's not always ready when you are. Client comes over later in the day and you don't have much natural light to work with, it's not going to help. You really should learn how to light with artificial light, whether it's controlled constant light or flash lighting. Um, this is going to give you much more control over the look of your images uh, and lighting. You know, this is my specialty. I've got lots of videos on lighting, so you can check out my channel. I also have some premium instruction on my site, and this is really good if you want to learn the professional stuff very quickly. Uh, so I do encourage you to go to my site and check those courses out. Post-processing. This is where you finish up your work. Software like Lightroom and Photoshop are going to be your best friends at this stage of uh, creating your portraits. You can also adjust exposure and tweak colors and contrast and even remove unwanted elements. There's lots of things you can do with Lightroom and Photoshop these days. And now Photoshop has generative AI. There's things you can do that you've never been able to do before. And the thing is, though, that you don't have to become an expert in any of that stuff. Uh, even retouching, which a lot of people do, a lot of photographers do their own retouching or, you know, digital background replacement. Uh, you don't have to really learn all this stuff if you don't want to because you can outsource it. But if you understand the basics of these techniques, it's going to help you know what's possible. So uh, even if you outsource some of your post work, you want to know the basics so that you can communicate with the person who is doing the work for you, uh, the retoucher or digital artist, what have you. Uh, you want to make sure that things get done the way that you want them to. So I would learn a little bit about how that stuff works, even if you don't intend on doing it yourself for any of your actual clients. It's really important to develop an eye for good portrait photography. I mean, you're going to be a portrait artist. You should know what looks good. It starts with studying the work of great portrait photographers. Now, I know that a lot of people, they're uh, their ecosystem for their visual uh, literacy when it comes to portraiture is Facebook or Instagram. And uh, let me tell you that you, sh you need to expand your sources of inspiration and uh, your examples of what a good portrait is, because it's rather limited when you are just looking at uh, stuff online. Online people tend to shoot for the admiration of their peers and it becomes a very narrow kind of uh, set of looks. So you don't want to get caught up in all that. You want a, just a more broad idea of what a good portrait is. So go to the bookstore or the library and look at some books on some of the actual portrait artists out there. Uh, analyze their compositions and their use of light and even, you know, their choice of subjects. Practice. That's your next best teacher. Shoot as much as you can and seek feedback. But again, uh, not necessarily... Uh, don't take it all that seriously if you're just talking about uh, your peers online. Always be open to learning, though. And while it's a good idea to know that, you know, keep up with the trends and know what the trends are, just remember that photography is very subjective. Uh, you need to learn what resonates with you and just take other people's advice is just that. It's just advice. Everybody's got an opinion on what makes a good portrait, but ultimately it's going to be you and your clients that are going to decide what is good. And a lot of that's going to have to do with your personal style. All right, now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about soft skills. All right, so a portrait is more than just a photograph. It's, it's a, like a collaboration between you and your subject. So you need to learn how to build rapport. This is really important. You want to make your subjects feel comfortable. And, you know, that comfort's going to shine through in the final portrait. So uh, you also want to learn some basic poses so that you can guide your subjects. But at the same time, keep it natural looking. I see so many weird poses these days, people just trying to imitate other photos that they've seen. 
most of the work you're going to be doing for clients isn't going to be things like having them standing in a bikini in front of a wall of graffiti or squatted down on the railroad tracks, you know, things like that. Things that look cool, but not necessarily practical for real world professional portraiture. You, you know, another thing you've got to learn to do is uh, just be prepared to adapt. You never know what kind of curveballs you're going to be thrown during a shoot. As photographers, we're problem solvers. So things come up, uh, we take care of it. We figure out how to get things done. Now, having said all this, people skills are very important. But, you know, even if you're lacking on that front, just learn as you go. Like most of this stuff, it just takes practice. And finally, going pro uh, requires that you learn more than just the technical skills and the soft skills that we talked about. It requires a business sense, all right? You've got to market yourself effectively. Uh, this involves building a portfolio. That's your first step uh, because it's like, it's like your visual resume. Uh, networking is also very important. Uh, you want to connect with fellow photographers in your area and even outside your area and uh, definitely potential clients. Uh, you never know where your next opportunity is going to come from. Um, let's not forget pricing and packages. You're going to have to work that out. You've got to understand your market and know what it means to offer value. And most importantly, you're going to have to learn how to sell. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, a happy client is your best marketing tool. Lots of times your clients are going to go out and sell for you. They're just going to, you know, somebody says something about needing some pictures and they're going to recommend you because you did a good job for them. Look, becoming a portrait photographer is definitely worth the effort that you'll put into it. Uh, it takes a mix of continuous learning and creativity and interpersonal skills. Uh, and what's great about it is that you can find success for yourself, but you can also bring a lot of joy to people with your work. This is a very rewarding career. All right, so that's what it takes. You got to learn the technical skills, the soft people skills. I'd say make sure that you can appreciate and recognize good portraiture and get a handle on marketing, sales and professional development. And this is your roadmap, really, to becoming a professional portrait photographer. Take a look at some of the guides and resources that I've listed below. And if you want to get on the fast track with all of this, check out my premium courses on lighting. And I even have a course on how to run a thriving portrait photography business from the ground up. I will show you how to get it started and get your first clients and then just keep that ball rolling. So go ahead and check that out. All the links are in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. That's about all I've got for you today. I'll see you next time.